Hey, what's the deal, YouTube? It's your girl, Miss Honey. Welcome back to the channel, you guys. It is your girl, Miss Honey, here to do a Real Housewives of Potomac review. Um, this is season four, episode 11, I believe. Can I get a witness is the name of this episode. And, um, it actually had quite a few deep moments. And I love the couple's dinner at the end of this episode. But at the same time, I think the energy that could have been given to the more serious subjects, it, it could it could have been it could have been pulled out a little bit more. But I'm I'm not gonna complain. I'm not gonna complain. I'm just gonna say this was this was an enlightening episode. Not just for us as viewers, but also for quite a few of the ladies here on, on, on this cast so let's just talk about things that um let's build up shall we so first we're going to talk about robin uh we get to see robin um considering a company to do some staging in the home that she has flipped i'm assuming it's finally done some 10 months later now and they are very much over budget, but she wants to do some staging now so then when people come in, they can see the home dressed and then possibly make offers and maybe she will sell the home that much faster. She goes to the beauty parlor to see, to get her hair done and the hairdresser, whose name is Shirley, um, gives me for its rocks tease. Now I tweeted this, and no one liked or she, <laughs> I was like, "What's well, hey, am I the only one that thinks that Shirley, she was giving me for his rocks tease, not just in looks, even when they flash back, but like her commentary, her advice, her directness, you know, kind of fun loving big sister ish. That really seems a lot like for it's rocks energy and. The way she was firing back at Robin Baby and getting her all together and, and being her friend all at the same time. <clears throat> it just gave me four. It's Rock's Tease. Y'all tell me what y'all think. Put that down below. Um. Anyway, she tells her about she didn't consider all this stuff she had to do in order to get the house sold. And the, and the <laughs> Shirley was like, really? Really, girl? You, didn't really, you thought it was just going to sell itself? Okay, and then she talks about how she's over budget. She also talks about, um, you know, Juan wanting to have a girl. You know, they got two boys. And I guess, you know, she tells the story about how they grew up and different siblings and not having siblings or not knowing your son, all this in order to say, that Juan really wants to have a child and she doesn't know because she doesn't really want to, she doesn't know if she wants to have another baby. She wonders if this is a deal breaker with Juan. I'm like, a deal breaker with Juan? A deal breaker with you? What's a deal breaker in y'all relationship? Y'all, y'all divorced and still live together and still have an active sex life. I mean, What's the deal breaker? You losing all the money? That wasn't a deal breaker. Him cheating on you? That wasn't a deal breaker. Him uh, not having any respect for you and not being quick to forgive you about losing that money like you forgive him about seeing other people. Infidelity. None of that was deal breakers. I'm not really sure why you think ovulation and um, gestation would be a deal breaker. Like if you didn't do it. It seems kind of odd. Like I, <laughs> at what at what point does does either one of you walk away? Like really? Like we really finna have this conversation? No, we're not. We're gonna move forward. Let's talk about Giselle. Giselle takes her girls apple picking, and it's typical. You know, people don't traditionally do those things. 
there's all types of comments about they're old, the apples are old, or they're bad, they're bad apples. I think she was saying they're old, they're dead. These apples are dead, these apples are dead. It was a weird turn of phrase. Anyway, um, they go sit down and talk, and come to find out um, the twins, Angel and Adore, um, they, though it's Grace, Grace is the older daughter, she plays sports, plays soccer, and Giselle's only been to one game. She's only taken the girls to one game. I was like, <sighs> anyway, um, it's just weird that you won't put any conversation about Sherman and what's going on with you and Sherman. You're not really talking about your book. You don't really reference your ex-husband a lot and the things that went on with him. Um, but you, it's okay putting your kids, letting it be known that you have missed all of your daughter's soccer games but one, like... You know, and she was like, well, you know, I'll be out here hustling. I'll be out here working. I was just like, I don't know, Giselle, but you had time to go to New Orleans. I guess that is work, too. And and you've been, you've been to several functions with the girls. It's weird. Anyway, come to find out, Angel and Adore, Angel feel like Adore and Grace get all the love and affection from, from Giselle. And Giselle's saying no, you know, and she's giving like little scenarios that shows that she knows her girls and she feels like they come to her and show her love, but Angel doesn't really, doesn't really come to her in this kind of loving way. And so Angel was like, no, no, no. We talking about what my perception of things is. My perception of things is that you tend to have more favoritism towards grace and adore and not me and you know she was like um zero to a hundred how great of a mom am i and adore and grace was like a hundred and uh angel was like 79 ish and i'm being generous i was like oh this is giselle's mom yeah you know because giselle mom wasn't happening either she was coattail 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 baby do not get ahead of yourself do not um Sitting here with all that fake schmooze and then 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 no. Let's talk about what's really going on. So Giselle takes Angel out for cocoa and dessert. And um Angel don't flinch. Angel did not flinch, boo. Angel said, I said what I said, darling. You're 79, and you'll stay at 79 until as such time as I make you 80. Giselle was like, well, I think it's you know, she was like, basically, you show favoritism. You show more affection towards them than you do me. And she was like, well, I don't have to worry about you. I don't have to check in on you. You're going to do your homework. You're going to make sure your room clean. You're, gonna, you're competitive. You stay busy, all of that. I was like, mm, okay, listen to what the child is telling you, Giselle. Don't smooth through this. And I don't think that she was schmoozing through this. I think she heard her. And I think it was a revelation for her hearing Angel be real, real clear with her and having counterpoints that also were very clear and very true. I think it put Giselle in the spot where she had to just flat out be honest because Angel was not accepting just some fly by night, you know, cheery, cheery, let's move on past this type um answer from Giselle and she tells her you know that she forgets she feels forgotten you know I was like ooh, ooh, ooh. girl these are warning signs you have to jump on top of it on top of it and she was like well no don't think of me that way just because I'm doing what's right doesn't mean I need less attention and less affection because I'm doing what's right, you still have to check in. So she was like, well, I'm going to have um, angel check-ins. And it was a fun way to, to say it, I guess. But you know this ain't no laughing matter. You know this is not a laughing matter. 
okay? You need to be real, real serious about checking in on your daughter because she's been very clear about what her needs are and how she is feeling. It seems like Giselle is taking it serious. This is the Giselle that we like. Um, however, I can see some of the games that she plays with the ladies. She plays with her girls. It's just that her girls not really having that, especially Angel, okay? Okay. All right, so let's talk about um, Monique and Chris. Monique and Chris have a little mini sonogram party. Basically, they invite, they have themselves, their children, and they invite Karen and Monique to come and be a part of this son 3D sonogramming, which the younger kids, part of it was probably attention span, and another part of it was attention getting, like we're putting all of this attention on the baby, and they just started acting out. So it was, it was a weird, awkward situation because Chris was trying to discipline them. He didn't want to take them out of the room because, you know, he wanted to see the sonogram too. The, the baby come across. They, they didn't want to tell what the baby was. But the baby is here now and she had a boy. So we know that the baby was a boy, but... um. Yeah, it was it was just a weird moment. It was a weird thing. It's just I I don't know that it's necessary to include everybody in on every aspect of what you and your family have going on. Monique takes uh beautiful pictures. She um orchestrates beautiful memories for her and her family. I don't necessarily know that it's something I would have done. It seems like something they would have done as a family. You kind of introduce the world to your newborn as opposed to bringing the world into every aspect of your, I don't know, maybe I don't, maybe I, maybe y'all tell me what y'all think. Y'all tell me what y'all think. It just seems like it would have been something that was a little bit more private. That's all I'm saying. But what do I know? Monique likes to show off. She likes to show how great they have it. She wants everything to be very idyllic. And very memorable so they sit down afterwards Chris take the kids out and she's gonna come back for a second one because she couldn't really get it good with the kids acting out and stuff <clears throat> and Karen does a great job facilitating this sort of um, coming together of Monique and of Candace. They were able to talk and express themselves individually how they felt in those moments without it being like this heated type situation. And Candace really was saying, I just don't like people keep bringing my mom up because it makes it seem like my mom is the reason why I'm behaving this way. And I have to take accountability for the fact that some of these things I'm doing because you little dot, because you little dot, you say, huh? You say little dot, say, huh? <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. But I appreciate her taking accountability. Karen said the same thing. She feels like this is a step in the right direction. And then, you know, Monique was saying she was emotional and everything. And, and you know, she missed the bubbly, joyful Candace. And she hasn't been that way in a minute. And Candace admitted that she's just in a real rough place trying to navigate being a newlywed, a wife it's just you let me tell you something making your own way in this world you know mama may have okay and forging your own way and making your own mistakes and falling falling short here and there papa may have okay is a character builder your mother cannot shield you from growing up she cannot keep you from experiencing things you can't allow her to keep you from experiencing missing a, a rent payment or a mortgage payment or a car note or it, it's time up for that it's time for all baby birds to get up out of the nest, Candace. You cannot be in your mama's nest kicking her out. This was her nest when you were still in the egg.
okay? She, you got to get out there, okay? God bless the child that's got his own. You got to get out there. You and Chris got to get out there and succeed or fail or or break even or fall up short or, or come up, you know, on the high end of things. That's something for you guys to do and experience. And your mom cannot, you can't allow your mom's money and your mom's, um, advice the way she would do things how she would do it even if it is good advice it's still good for you to get out there and try and see and forge your own way create a life where you can become your mother at some point and an age and you can give advice see if you can't live if you haven't lived how can you go and give advice? This is what makes it seem even more ridiculous, Monique. I mean, um, Candace, the way you talking to Ashley. Yes, granted, a Ashley needs a mirror held up to her face. But at the same time, Candace, you ain't lived long enough to be trying to tell Ashley you just got married. You haven't had any, had any, you haven't been pregnant that we know of, you know, but you, for you to stand in, in judgment and rule over, yes, it, it, it's entertaining. And we glad to see Ashley get her come up. And, but at the same time, girl, sit down, sit down. You don't really have room to give anybody advice. You should be in listening mode. You should be in, in sponge mode. Okay. Anywho, we're going to see that sponge mode. We see where Candace talks to her mom and all of that. But we're going to talk a little bit more about that in a minute. So, um, let's see. So, Monique and, and Candace kind of hash that out. It's a good moment. Like I said, Karen did a great job facilitating. Then we get to see Ashley. First of all, Ashley and Karen both in the confessional that makeup is so drag um for me ashley especially was giving me donna summer tease i mean she was obviously pregnant and like a little plumper but it was like her neck was missing and it was just the head on top of her shoulders and then she had this humongous dark haired curly type helmet hair on she remind me of pat 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 androgynous pat <laughs> i think that's the character i'm talking about y'all put it down below but y'all know what i'm talking about we did uh sweeney used to play <sighs> hello yeah that's what she looked like and she looked like her mama she looked a lot like her mama in this confessional and the makeup it was so 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 Diane Carrington, uh, circa 1980, like the makeup was horrible. Uh, confessional makeup was just like womp. So, um, let's see. So Ashley is out and about with family and friends and she's telling everyone that ironically her and Michael have drawn closer despite of everything that's going on so it must have been it must have been weeks or it must have been good time difference between when they found out and the rainbow party although it seemed like you know things happen in terms of the episodes we have to remember that things they film when they film so this could have been a great deal of time she seems like one she was aware of it and two they have resolved it in the courts and and she and michael have resolved it amongst themselves this has brought them closer this has drawn them closer Later we see where her and Giselle are going somewhere and they're riding in the car. And Giselle fakes and bakes her, right? She she puts up this fake concern and then there's this idea that I can relate and then I am really team you. And I'm sure that if this were to happen with me in my circumstance, then I know how I... And Ashley did a beautiful job. She did a beautiful job just hitting it right back across the net. <laughs> you know, she was like, are you okay with booty grabbing? Is booty grabbing okay? And she was like, well, that you just, you're assuming 
that the booty grabbing did happen, Giselle. I, no one's said anything about him actually admitting. Okay, so he is, in fact, Giselle, we really, we really can talk about this. I mean, she didn't offend Giselle. Giselle realized that she had that gazelle right there in her mouth, and the gazelle was able to wiggle loose, give her a swift kick in the gullet, and run off successfully. <laughs> yeah, because you're playing with someone who this is what she does. I'm sure Ashley did. You know, she, she's been preparing for this in the pageant circuit with these girls over the last couple of few seasons. Like, she can dish it and given the um, right opportunity, she can definitely reflect. I mean, uh, deflect. Okay, so... Um, then we see, well, Ashley goes to therapy. Ashley gets to therapy and this revelation comes out in therapy when she talks about how she really just wants to protect Michael through all of this. And she wants to be a good wife through all of this. And the therapist, Esther. Okay, so we got Shirley, Esther, <laughs> Angel, Adore, Grace. <laughs> I was like, Lord, these names. Anyway. And then in, in Esther, the therapist reflects back on some of the things that Ashley had been saying in the previous a, a season and the previous a, a therapy session where she was saying that um, she just wants to please him. She just wants everything to be right. Ashley reveals that her dad left one day um, and not too long after she was born, I think two or three, and it went back to Georgia and she never heard from him again. She never saw him again. She talked about how she used to talk to him out loud in her room, thinking that he was just this type of, you know, <clears throat> she had an idealized idea of her father thinking that because he was a dad and, and he was her father, he could hear her talk from anywhere in the world. Like just a naive kid thought anyway, Elsa, the therapist, was trying to get her to see maybe <clears throat> this need to keep everything close to her chest to protect Michael. Why it doesn't allow her to be comforted, it doesn't allow her to be supported. I was like, Well, she ain't gonna get no support out of these girls. One, because she hasn't given any support, really to a lot of these girls. She's burned each and every one of them in one shape, form, fashion, or another. But um, she tells her, it comes out that Ashley admits that she considers, while she considers Michael her husband and her uh, honey lover friend, that she also sees him in a paternal sense too. I was like, ooh. Yeah, girl, we was just waiting on you. We was just waiting on you to say it out loud, girl. But a lot of people been saying that. A lot of reviewers said that. I've said it even on this season when he takes her, when she, she claims she's not drinking because she's trying to get pregnant. He has to take her outside of Monique's, I mean, uh, Candace's wedding because she is so twisted from all those shots. and He kind of scolds her, you know. Um... And she does seem like she wants to please him. And I think the nature of their relationship, how they handle it, is a part of a contractual agreement. I think that there has been a system of, of give and take and bartering, not in the same traditional sense of marriage, but I believe that Michael and... Ashley have a contractual relationship. Y'all remember I said there's just something about their relationship that does not seem authentic to me. <clears throat> and even though she is having this emotional moment about her father and separating the two, like this is your husband, Michael. He is not your father. And later on when she goes to talk to her mom and her and her mom are having this conversation. She wants more information about her dad. Her mom starts to tell her a little bit here, a little bit there. He's a white man. Well, she says she reached out to him, Ashley did, to her daddy on Facebook, and he blocked her. 
And so the mom is still friends with him on Facebook, and he haven't blocked the mom. So Ashley goes to his photos on Facebook, and she sees him with his wife, his children by his wife. He's married to a white woman. Uh, doesn't seem like he wants to be involved with her at all. And I don't know if that's because she half black. I'm not sure. Um, but looking at them pictures, even though it was blurred out, the man looked like Michael. Michael might be a little bit older than her daddy, actually. You know, Michael looked like Mr. Burns to me. But she cries. And this is the first time I see just a real genuine moment from Ashley. But it's all to deflect what's going on with Michael. It's all to kind of move away from that Michael storyline. Because without the Michael storyline, um, you know, she, it, it's weird. So I, I guess at some point she's going to try to go down to Georgia and maybe they're going to film it. I don't know. It's, it's going to be odd. I wouldn't open myself up for that. Y'all know Kenya did that. And that was brutal trying to get her mama to talk to her. Anyway, this is what I was going to say. I really do feel like Ashley is no fool. She proves that in the car with Giselle. You know, um, Michael is no fool either. I think when she did that second prenup, it was an arrangement that she would stick up in there a little bit longer and he would stick in there a little bit longer. And I think he was going to continue to play the cat and mouse in terms of getting her pregnant. I think that a couple of scandalous things have come out about him and she had a miscarriage and I think Ashley was able to get Michael to a place where he would agree to alter the contract and give her a child, okay? And so he seems to have fell right in line with that. But there are these things that, she, although I think Ashley is very aware of these things, I think, like I said, contractually, she knows. But what she has done is she has used his indiscretion to, 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 um, to leverage as leverage to get this baby and to get the life that she wants and she's going to get it she's going to get the money that she wants whether it's in child support or in alimony and at the end of the day she's going to play the victim about this whole michael situation dollars the donuts though it is going to come out that ashley is very much aware that michael has a propensity to do some some seedy things he has a propensity for the seediness the freakishness the fetishes the these types of things really you know because um i just i don't get authenticity from them uh the fact that she considers him a father figure it just seems like when she when she was had that that moment it was, almost seemed like the therapist was telling her that she does need to vocalize more her feelings about what's going on and how he's doing it. But I was like, oh, that's not a part of the contract, Elster. <laughs> Mark my words. So lastly, we get to see um, the Hugers, Karen and Ray, and uh, the Samuels, Monique and Chris. And then we get to see Chris and Candace. I do not know their last name. <clears throat> they all go out for a couple's dinner. And Karen is hoping that... Candace will see that it is work, you know, um, it is a lot of love and emotion, but it is work. Candace and Chris are on their way there. They're riding in the car and she goes full Dorothy on him, Dorothy, telling him what it is he's not going to do tonight. Things that, you know, he's not, you know, and your nails are not clean. Now it's so funny because she is she was supposed to have a contract agreement with with um big dot you know little dot and big dot got together they were supposed to do this contract that uh therapist ken gave them where they say the things that they are going to work on when candace was in charge of making sure that big dot acknowledge everything that she was supposed to work on and also add a couple of two three 
things more to the list. When Big Dot asked Little Dot, what are some things you're going to put on the contract? Candace, I think her response was that um, she's going to work on receiving. And then that was like kind of it. She went right back in on Dorothy. Same thing she was doing with Chris in the car. Um, she was picking, 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 picking. Well, these are still the early stages. These are still the early stages. Um, Dorothy was supposed to work on her facial expression. That's a very difficult thing to change. I'm sorry. I think it really requires space and time in order to break those those little physical habits that you have when you're around people. Um, the ways that you deal with your emotions in in a you know in your face and in your body language they'll it takes time to break those things and it doesn't help that candace is there to check each one off and remind big big dot of each and every one and she does the same thing with chris in the car on the way to dinner it's the way he takes a breath i agree with beautiful soul she said last week that she Candace gonna run Chris off the way he takes that sigh and looks away like what have I gotten myself into is it even worth it Candace needs to take note they go to dinner and it is great dinner conversation I could have did without Candid, uh Karen and that oyster it just took so long for her to get that oyster down her gullet Ray was looking at her I think he fell asleep while watching you know he was like oh and she was like oh Baby, did you like that? He was like, well, yeah, you're not going to tell me more than just, yeah. He was like, well, not here at the table. <laughs> I was like, there's nothing going on with y'all at that house but Z's, okay, nap times, okay. Y'all probably go to S&S Cafeteria or the Piccadilly and get a whole bunch of a la carte dishes at around 4 p.m., Y'all be in bed by 7.30, 8 o'clock. I mean, it's still daylight outside. All right. But if y'all want to call this making love, that's fine. That's fine, Karen. Whatever. Karen just kind of seems like she's overdoing it sometimes. And Ray always looks surprised like, oh, 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 wait a minute. You acknowledge? <laughs> I was supposed to jump in here. <laughs> Anywho, it's a, it's a fun night for all. Y'all know Chris always gets serious. And he got serious with Monique about being out there on that, on that, on that, in that Sunny Hill farm and trying to scuffle with, with, with that alley cat. She ain't no alley cat. Um, with Candace and she pregnant, she already had a miscarriage. So he got her all the way together. And Monique submitted to that. Later on, Chris is serious again. He wants to know what's going on with this uh, wanting to suck. Wanting to put a tallywhacker in your mouth and wanting to, wanting to grab on people's private bodies and things of this nature. And Monique was like, well, she had got a little bit more tea. She said that uh, Ashley told her that this situation has brought her and Michael closer. And Candace was like, how is it bringing them closer? And he, I was like, Candace, it ain't your business, uh, Dot. It's not your business, little Dot. Mind your business, little Dot. Ashley ain't even here. Then they said, well, what happened in the basement? And did anybody hear anything? Did anybody see anything? Come to find out, Chris has been called as a material witness because he was there when the, can when the cameraman walked between. We couldn't even really get it all fleshed out. And we won't get the conversation and the fleshing out of this thing probably till the reunion. But... Chris supposed to have been called as a material witness. We are we know now that the charges I guess have been dropped or dismissed or whatever. I don't know, but like they said, somebody somewhere had their phone out and was taking pictures. I don't know. It was a rainbow party, maybe not. No cameras in the basement, maybe not. If they had fundamental proof it would i think it would have surfaced or maybe if it did surface there surface there was an arrangement made you know um for a lot of caucasian people they there there are arrangements made um there's very rarely are there arrangements made for african americans uh, unless you are someone else of um or maybe a small celebrity status on a show that was once popular i don't know 
anyway so but how convinced candace is she is pushing 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 this narrative and this is what monique was saying this makes you look bad as much as you hate ashley for this behavior you are now doing it and it looks bad ashley's getting her comeuppance nobody is saying that she shouldn't it's just that how hard you're going girl how invested you are in this oh it just reflects badly poorly on you candace and um yeah, that was the episode. You guys tell me what you think about this episode. What do y'all think about this dynamic that Ashley and Michael have set up? I know I did a lot of kidding in the last episode, but honestly, you guys, doesn't it seem like, you know, they had this contract and and things have happened that have, although they haven't physically altered the contract, I don't know, it could have been physically altered. It seems like Ashley has got a little bit more leverage now that she has gotten pregnant and has had the baby and, and, and it has been exposed to people two or three times now that Michael is has a propensity for indiscretion. I think she's leveraging it to get whatever it is she wants. Um, and I think she's getting the things that are important to her. So, anyway, um, that was a good moment between Ashley and her mom and, you know, her crying and her mom holding her hand. And she, her mom thinks she should go down there and look for her daddy, but I was like, again, all I'm going to say is Kenya Moore. Okay, what do you guys think about the Candace situation with her and her mom? What do you guys think about Giselle and Angel? What a tough little girl. Very, very um, clear about what it is she wants to say and how she feels. She's a smart girl and very articulate and, and knowledgeable. And I think she is, is the one to give her mother run for her money. Y'all tell me what y'all think. Put it down below. Until next time, honeybees. Mwah, mwah, mwah. I'll holla.